Hey everyone, today's gonna be a chatty get ready with me, just updating you on some life stuff. This is gonna be a full face of new makeup, but I'm not really gonna be talking about reviews because a lot of these are first or second impressions. So I'm gonna save the reviews for a video when I can really go into detail about the products. You know I'm not one for long intros, so let's just jump right in. Uh, I was very grateful to receive a PR package from Armani and they sent me their Luminous Silk Foundation in 4.75. Everyone's raved about the Luminous Silk Foundation for years. And the reason I hadn't tried it was it contains quite a lot of fragrance. And as I'm applying it right now, it's quite pungent. It also smells a lot like alcohol. So I was just a little bit worried it would be drying and it would be ultimately irritating on my super sensitive skin. And I think as you can see, 4.75 is a really nice match for me. And weirdly enough, this is very fragranced, but it doesn't bother me at all. I haven't had any chemical burns or any reactions like I have to the Makeup Forever Foundation or the Dior concealer, so I'm loving it. This is just the best foundation I've ever tried. I mean, it must be. Anyways, I said I wasn't gonna be talking about the product, so I'm gonna get into the life update. I guess I'll kick it off on a positive note, which is that it's that time of year again. It's almost Coachella, and I know a lot of people really hate Coachella people who've never been, who like to judge it as just like a shitty influencer trash zone. But for me, you know, Coachella is my Halloween. I never really dress up for Halloween because it's always so fucking cold everywhere I am. And I honestly just like to be at home watching movies on Halloween. But Coachella, when it's nice and bright and sunny, I feel like I really have the ability to be free and to kind of step into someone else make more bold choices with my fashion, show off my body a little bit more than I usually do. And so it's always a really fun excuse to just not even be someone different than who you are, but just be like the more enhanced free version of yourself. And you know, that's the way about how I feel about every music festival in general. That's why I love festivals. It's why I love concerts. The concerts I go to are always really welcoming and inclusive and loving and accepting. And I mean, what, what better thing is there in the entire world than that? So that's the first reason I'm excited is because I just get to really be myself and be really comfortable in my skin when I'm there. And you know, the influencer community there is actually a really, really small portion. It's like, those are the people generally hanging out in VIP who aren't really there for the music. Although the people watching vibes are <laughs> immaculate. Real quick, now I'm going in with the um, Givenchy Prism Libre Skin Caring Concealer. And I bought the shade C240. It's very sheer. And so I think it's gonna work just fine as a shade. And this year what's great is the lineup was just absolutely made for me. I mean, so many of my favorite artists are gonna be there. And so we've decided that we are probably gonna actually buy tickets to weekend two as well. It's something that we've always wanted to do, but it's very expensive to do that. And you know, it's also really exhausting and time consuming. But John and I don't really know how many years we have left without kids. And so with this lineup that is so fantastic, we just figured like this is our year to really finally, you know, tick this thing off the bucket list that we've wanted to do forever. And that way we'll be able to see every single artist that we want to because this year um, we actually researched every artist and um, we went through every single artist on YouTube and watched a minimum of three performances from them. So we could really get a good understanding of each artist down to the smallest, most beginner acts all the way up to the headliners. And so that way we really know what we should prioritize. And I don't know, I was kind of thinking of putting something on my personal channel of a video maybe about like all the acts you should see at Coachella or like best new music, um, incorporating more music on my personal channel because I do have a playlist on Spotify called Song of the Day. I will link it on the screen above. Basically, I just add one song to the playlist every single day. And so all you have to do is go to that one song and play it so you don't get overwhelmed with new music. And it's just a great way for me to share my love of music. So definitely check out that playlist if you want. And actually, this Givenchy concealer looks really nice. Let me zoom you in. It's so thin and it looked really, really sheer on the back of my hand, but under my eyes, I mean, that actually covered really beautifully. And even though it looked really yellow on my hand, under my eyes, it looks like a great match. Don't you just love when that happens? Just going in with my tried and true Makeup Forever full cover concealers. I'll link everything in the description box if I don't end up talking about it. But anyways, you know, the biggest thing that we're excited about right now is just going to Coachella, finally getting some really nice sunshine. We have had the coldest, wettest winter that we have ever had here. 
and it's the first time I've really experienced seasonal depression. For some reason, when I lived in New York and when I lived in Connecticut, even though it's much, much colder there, I never really felt like I had seasonal depression because there's still so much that you can do in New York. You know, you can go see friends, go to bars and restaurants and movies and concerts. Like the world in New York doesn't slow down because of the winter time. But here where we live, we don't have, you know, a network of people or friends. There's only one bar and one restaurant in town. And so everything here just stops. And it has just been like, total purgatory since December. Thumper has seasonal depression, I can tell. He's like, bitch, I'm ready for spring. And by the way, if you haven't subscribed, um, I'll leave a link to my personal channel on the screen above. My first video was all about not feeling ready to have kids, and I'm about to film a chronic illness video all about what I've learned in the eight months since being diagnosed with EDS, among other things. And I'm also gonna post my embryo freezing journey soon, so I'll chat about that next. Just taking Tom Ford Terra. And with the embryo freezing, we did that in January. I haven't talked about it much on my channel here because the embryo freezing vlog is going to be very, very long and very detailed, but it might even be split up into two parts. Basically, I filmed two different sections. One is just me sitting down telling you everything you need to know if you're gonna be freezing your eggs or your embryos, especially if you're someone with chronic illness. Now I'm taking this blush from Jones Road and it is called Sandy. It's just like a nice, very neutral, rosy kind of beige shade, very muted, a little bit desaturated, which is nice. And I make it even more sheer with this Morphe X Jaclyn Hill JH06 brush. Look how fluffy it is. It just makes anything that's pigmented super sheer and that's why I love it. You can like really kind of get in there and it's just never too much on this brush. The reason I brought up the Embryo Freezing vlog and just the experience in general is I've been pretty sick since then, and I was bedridden for 17 days when we were doing the hormone injections. I don't know if it's that my chronic health conditions really negatively interacted with the, the fertility hormones. My fertility doctor was like, we've never seen this happen before. I don't think it's the hormones. You must have just gotten sick. And I was like, girl, I've never been sick like this before. And it coincided exactly with the, um, with the injections and like, if I would increase my estrogen, I would get so much more sick. When I would decrease the estrogen, I would feel better. So I just feel like it was very clearly related to the hormone injections. And ever since January, I have not recovered. I have just gotten sick back to back to back. I have had horrific POTS episodes. If you don't know what POTS is, it's postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. And it basically just makes me like pass out, um, makes me get really weak, lethargic, clammy, sweaty, my blood pressure drops because blood pools in my legs and I can't get enough blood to my upper body and my thyroid and things like that. So I wear compression socks like these. To be honest, they don't do jack shit. Oh, and I forgot to prep the lips. This I bought on Sephora. It's the Ole Henriksen Pout Preserve Peptide Lip Treatment. I got it because you know, your lips need a little love too. Peptides for your lips are great because it helps to kind of soften the signs of aging. And I love the Road Beauty peptide lip treatment for a really long time. And then they all turned grainy and gritty in the tubes. And so I threw them all out, it was horrible. Unfortunately, I can't recommend that anymore because I really loved it. And this is very similar, it smells like creamsicles, but instead of being kind of like grippier, like the Road peptide lip treatment, this is more buttery. So it's got a little more slip to it without being oily or thin. It's just a really nice lightweight balm. And now I'm going in with the Armani Fluid Sheer in the shade two. And I'm just gonna pump a little bit on the back of my hand cause it's like kind of liquidy. I've just been all sorts of fucked up since the hormone injections. And I really wanna hear from someone in the EDS or dysautonomia or POTS community. Like if any of you froze your eggs and you have those conditions, did they mess you up? I mean, it's January, February, March, April. It's three months later and I'm still just really out of it and really struggling with my energy and things like that. And then what happened is after the embryo freezing disaster where we only got two embryos out of the whole cycle and they said that they were aiming for like eight, you know, we don't know what happened there. There's no explanation for it, um, but at least we got two. We're very thankful we at least got two. 
Um, but you know, it just, it, the whole thing did not go as we wanted. And it was, you know, it's made us a little bit scared about fertility and all that. So it was a very, very, very stressful month. In February, it was my birthday. We went to Ojai and we went to Ojai for my birthday because we're thinking of moving there. The inventory is just really, really limited. So that was a really nice birthday trip. And I got to see my friend Matt, which was great. Side note though, holy shit, the fluid shear from Armani totally sets down like this just feels like my normal skin completely set totally budge proof shimmer free or like glitter free oh i might say this is my number one highlighter now this this might beat charlotte tilbury flawless filter i think it might because it has a pump instead of a doe foot so it's so much easier to use mix in a body lotion things like that you know armani got my eye on you. I am going to do a review on the Victoria Beckham eyeshadow sticks. If you want to see my YouTube short, I applied all of them already there. A quick PSA, if you didn't know this, you can read the full captions on YouTube shorts. You just have to click the three dots in the upper right hand corner if you're looking on a mobile device or the three dots on the right hand side of the screen if you're on a computer. And if you click the three dots and then you click description, you'll see all of my reviews and all of my YouTube shorts. And I feel like a lot of people didn't realize that because I did review these already. So instead today, I'm gonna go in with a new eyeshadow from Colfi. This is their Zari Eyes Cream Eyeshadow in the shade Bronze Brocade. Oh, look at how beautiful that is. And this is the shade Sitara Sparkles. I wore this yesterday, it's stunning. I already filmed my Sephora recommendations video ahead of the Sephora sale that's happening very soon, I think on April 14th. And I tried these after I filmed that video. And so I'm just gonna talk about them a little bit right now because they really deserved to be in that video. So right now I'm gonna drop in a clip of Sitara Sparkles because I wore it yesterday. This formula is like if you took Charlotte Tilbury Eyes to Mesmerize and you mixed it with like a jelly and then you added more glitter to it it is oh it's like the cream shadow of my dreams okay now i'm gonna go with bronze brocade and i'll zoom you in a little bit in a second but it's just like it's just like jelly you almost can barely pick it up on a brush so what i like about it is it's so sheer on a brush you can't mess it up, but then if you use your finger, you get full impact. So it's like a very beginner friendly, what am I trying to say? It just, it works for all different levels of, you know, experience in makeup. And I think that that's really cool because my experience is more on the beginner side in terms of skills. So with a brush, you just get this like slight wash of color. I can get a little bit more like you're seeing here but really you need your finger to pick up on it because it's like a super silky kind of jelly feeling. So I'll just show you first what one very sheer layer looks like and then we'll go in and build it up for you. All right, so back to the story and the situation. After we went to Ojai for my birthday, a few weeks later, we went to Miami and that was really nice. We were visiting a friend and I got sick again. I contracted a bacterial lung infection while we were there and it was hell. I was in bed sick for three days. And it sucks because like when you're doing a cross country trip, that's A, very expensive, like three days there that's just wasted. And you're also just so far from home and it's just, you know, really, really shitty. And that's what's super frustrating about traveling with a chronic health condition is it's like half the time, that's why I don't leave my house. That's why I can't travel is because I get sick every time. and. You know, as we look to potentially having kids one day, we really wanna go on some international trips first, but I'm just so sick, I'm so scared that I'm gonna get sick and get really sick that it's not gonna be worth it for me because I don't have the money to just like throw around on travel. I totally forgot to do my eyebrows. <laughs> Oops. So anyways, you know, I was really excited to go to Miami and to finally have a vacation. Just ended up getting sick and I couldn't see a group of friends from New York that were in Miami that I was supposed to see. And I'm just, you know, that's when I get really down in the dumps about my health and about my conditions because I just, it just is so unfair. You know, I just, I really want to be, be able to, to travel and be okay. So there you go. That is one layer. And now I'm just going to dip my finger in and I'll show you how you can build it up just on the lid and look at that shine you get. I'll zoom you in. Oh, it's just so beautiful and so easy to use. So the Miami trip was a bit of a fail because I got sick. And then not only that, but I ended up getting sick with the bacterial lung infection for a month. 
and it's just really scary, you know? On my lower lash line, I'm gonna take one of the Armani, what are they called, eye tints. Um, this one's in 20 and this is 22. Mm, I think I'm gonna go with the darker smoky shade. And I'm taking it on this Jones Road eyeshadow brush. It's called the Eye Fluffy Brush. And back to the story, what has happened with the bacterial lung infection is that when you have these chronic health conditions, um, and you get sick from something else because our immune systems are just a lot lower and a lot worse than like normal able-bodied people um, It affects the symptoms that we have of our chronic health conditions. So with this bacterial lung infection I've been having horrible POTS flare-ups. I've Almost fainted about I don't know at this point six times in the past two weeks and like for me That's a lot and when I do get to the point where I'm having a POTS episode it takes me out for the entire day. I have to take the entire day off work. I have to get in bed. I can't even look at my phone. I can't respond to text messages. I am like head down, can barely lift my arm kind of situation. Like it ain't good. So for the past few weeks, I've been really scared that I can't go to Coachella at all because of it. And that was gonna be devastating. And you know, I was having a real kind of come to Jesus moment of like, am I done going to festivals? Am I done having fun? Am I done with my youth? Is it all over? Can my body just not take it anymore? You know, there will be a time when I have to have that conversation with myself and it's gonna be really sad. But I'm feeling so much more hopeful today because I just feel better and maybe that's a sign that my infection's going away and that I'll be able to have a good time. And last year I got heat exhaustion at Coachella on day three and had to go home, which was really sad. And at the time I didn't have a diagnosis yet and so I had no idea what was happening. I just thought like, maybe I'm just sensitive. Um, turns out I had a POTS episode at Coachella and heat is a trigger. And so this year I am gonna force myself to finally get ADA and I have a lot of mixed feelings about it. On one hand, I know that I meet the requirements for ADA and so I should feel confident in getting ADA access. On the other hand, it's conflicting because I look able-bodied and I, I'm really only disabled when I'm actively having a flare-up. But I just get a little bit worried that, you know, I'm gonna be able to dance and have a good normal time at some points at Coachella and I'm worried that people might see me in ADA and kind of judge me for that. And I certainly would like never take a spot from someone who needed it, but I just feel like this year I have so much anxiety about going. My health is in a much worse place than it was last year. I just need to know that if I have an issue, I'll be okay. And the only way to do that is to get ADA access. And last year I went to a festival and I went to an ADA line and the guy in front of me was in a wheelchair and he had no legs and I was just, I started crying because I felt like such an imposter. And a body grief counselor on Instagram who is awesome, her name's, um, I think, Recovery Love and Care on Instagram, her name's Jane. She has EDS as well, she has a more severe case. She told me that my perspective on ADA is internalized ableism and that I should really work on letting that go. So that's what I'm doing this year is I'm, I've made a promise to myself that I'm gonna get ADA and even if I'm having a good day, I'm gonna get it because the next day could be a really bad day and I could really need it that day. Obviously, if things are really bad, then I just can't go and I would have to stay home. Um, but I'm just trying to be prepared this time because I really don't want to faint at the festival again. It was horrible. And some other life updates for you. I've started uh, family therapy with my mom, which has been undoubtedly the hardest thing I've ever done in my entire life, no question. And a lot of people asked me about it on Instagram and they said, well, why are you doing family therapy if you know that narcissists can't change? Um, I'm not going into therapy expecting change or even hoping for it. I'm going into therapy so that one day when I'm on my deathbed, I look back on my life and I don't live with regret. I don't say to myself, you know, I could have done more. I didn't try. I don't wanna be that kind of person. I wanna be the girl that tried in every aspect of my life. And so if that means going through a really painful process to see if it can make a difference, then that's what I have to do to basically sleep at night. And the great thing is there actually has been progress, very small, slow progress, but progress. When you've got someone who's in their 70s, like the chances of them going through a massive transformation is pretty slim. I'll know when it's time to give up. I think I'll know when I'm ready to tap out. And in the meantime, I'm just grateful that uh, my mom it has really started understanding what I went through. And hearing it through someone else, through a therapist, I think is very different than hearing it from your child. So for now, I'm really glad that I'm doing the family therapy, but I will tell you it 
wipes you out for the whole day. Oh my God. When I go through those sessions, I mean, they are brutal. We are talking unpacking 33 years of shit. One tip, if you do family therapy or couples therapy, compliment sandwiches are really helpful. So John and I do that all the time when we have, you know, feedback to give each other when there's something you know, a little bit negative or contentious or something that could be a little bit awkward. We always say, you know, hey honey, you've been doing a great job with X, Y, Z, but I could use a little bit more support around blah, 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 um, but you're doing a great job. And so kind of compliment sandwiching um, the, the thing that's negative is a great way to communicate your feelings if you're kind of, you know, struggling with it. And that's something that we've really learned about in therapy. And what's cool is that John is gonna be on my personal channel and we're gonna do a video all about couples therapy and what we've learned. Um, we've been in couples therapy together for four years. Best thing we've ever done. We will never not be in couples therapy. We fucking love our therapist. Like she's a, she's a G, like she's the fucking coolest person in the whole world. I love her. And being in therapy for four years, you really do learn a lot. Hi, you in wanna therapy, come? In therapy, I learned that sometimes no, you come just here. gotta spontaneous and spontaneously stop by and say what's up and show affection. Oh, you learned that in therapy? Uh, actually mostly from getting berated by you and the getting <laughs> beaten over the brow with it, but <laughs> yeah. Here, come here, say hi. Hi world. Hi. What's up? Let's get these levels right. You look beautiful. Yeah. Would you like a little blush? No. You look gorgeous as you are. <laughs> All right. Okay, for lips. I bought five shades of the Nabla Beyond Jelly lipsticks. I think with this bronzy eye, let's go for Ardor, which is like a chocolate. Unfortunately, these lipsticks are absolutely nothing like the marketing campaign and I'm quite bitter about it. The campaign was like all of these lip swatches that were just like wet looking. They looked like they were wearing a lip oil. This formula though is just like Glossier Ultra Lips. It's exactly Glossier Ultra Lips, which is great because I love that formula. It's just not as wet and glossy as I was expecting, but it's thicker stiffer, more cushiony, more comfortable, and it smells like coconut, so these are fantastic. And there you go, that is Ardor. Let's look at it in better lighting. I feel like maybe the chocolate lip is too much. I am going into a work meeting after this, so I do have to be a little bit reserved, which is why the majority of my makeup looks, if you're new here, are pretty chill, because I always have to be in a Zoom meeting afterwards. I can't just like roll in with like, blue eyes. Okay, the nude shade from the line that is a little bit more on the muted, desaturated mob side is Lutz, L-U-Z. And it's quite light and sheer. Yeah, that's more appropriate for my meetings today. And in better lighting, this is what Lutz looks like. Oh no, I just realized that my freaking chair was in the frame the whole time. I'm a mess. So I do have my favorite powder here, which is the Makeup Forever Ultra Matte powder in vanilla, but I purchased the new makeup, nope, Milk Makeup Pore Eclipse Matte Setting Spray. So without doing any powder, I don't have much shine because Armani Luminous Silk sets down to a natural finish, but let's see if we can take down some of the shine around my nose, my cheeks, you know, my T-zone. I shook it well. Mmm, fine mist. Thanks for watching. If you wanna see any specific reviews of these products, definitely let me know so I can do a video. Don't forget to follow Song of the Day on Spotify if you want some new music inspiration and subscribe to my personal channel if you wanna hear more about my chronic health conditions, you know, what I'm thinking about in therapy um, and other personal subjects like that. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, I hope you'll click the thumbs up because it really helps my channel grow and wherever you are, I hope you're having a great day. I'll see you in the next one.